Welcome, thanks for stopping by. It's time to learn with our friend Clive. So grab your for joining me in time. the studio today. This is a relaxed, real time painting. Um, originally, I was just going to put some music on uh, this, and um, but I changed my mind. So I'm doing a voiceover at the moment because I painted this a couple of weeks ago um, when I had problems with my sound. And the idea was um, to do some relaxing videos on a Friday. Um, I missed my deadline this week, <laughs> or last week, I should say. So, yeah, I thought today I would just use the video footage and um, just do a little bit of narration over the top. So thank you very much for joining me in the studio. I um, I want to say a big thank you to every single one of my subscribers out there. Uh, you do definitely make a, a difference. So please like the video. Give, you know, give me a thumbs up and... Um, you know, spread the word. If there's, if there's anybody out there you think that would benefit from um, just watching my me painting, basically, um, yeah, send them a link. And thank you very much for all you do and supporting me in the studio. So um, I've got a little bit of blue and a little bit of white, and I'm just trying to put a sky in. Now, I'm going to paint some sort of a landscape today. Um, these type of paintings specifically um are, uh, this is what i do to relax uh, so um i don't video every single one that i do because i i paint a lot of paintings and um the reason i was going to do a, a friday relax and paint is because um that's what i do most fridays is I, i'll go into the studio i'll give myself an hour and um, see if I can come up with um, a couple of ideas and a couple of tests for lessons and things like that. So, yeah. So, um, after using a little bit of blue, I picked up a little bit of burnt amber. I've whitened that down with some white, as you can see. And I'm just putting some shadows in, some cloud shadows. And I'm just, just basically rubbing a brush around. There's no Pacific brush that I'm using. Just happens to be a little short flat, um, just if in case you're interested. But um, yeah, I don't, I don't stand on ceremony. I'll just pick up a brush and think, yeah, what can I do with this brush? Um, I'll use it to paint some clouds. <laughs> I'll put a sky in or whatever. So that's what I do. Um, and and don't get bogged down too much in, in in technique, and don't get bogged down too much in the tools that you're using. And um, basically, just just have fun. So I got a bit of white, which I'm just tapping on the edge of my brush. I'm just going to tap that in just to get a little bit of highlight. Because if you look at a cloud, they're free floating um, things. There, there's there's no actual shape to a cloud. It can be in many different things in many different ways. So yeah, just be free and 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 flow the paint across the surface of the canvas like I'm doing. And this is a little canvas panel that I'm using, by the way. So now I'm blending that into the little burnt amber shadows because you know the clouds have always got always seem that little bit darker underneath, don't they? Always seem that little bit darker underneath. And that's because the light is penetrating from above. I mean doing a cast shadow underneath the cloud. That's why it always looks a little bit darker underneath. Um, unless the cloud is a light cloud, obviously, and then the light penetrates all the way through. But if the cloud's holding a little bit of water. Then it's gonna sh it's gonna show that little bit of shadow. So just continuing, just to push that paint in with the brush. And as I'm doing this, I'm listening to some relaxation music on the headset. I've got some incense sticks burning, and and, then, and as I said, this is what I do to relax because I suffer uh, with extreme anxiety. And um, yeah, this seems to help. This seems to help me. So, just darkening that little bit of blue. I've just put a little tiny bit of burnt amber into the blue. And um, so I've just darkened that blue up a little bit. And um, I think I'm putting a range of mountains in here. I think that's what I did. I can't remember this painting, actually. Um, I can remember painting a tree and having a little bit of fun with the tree. Uh, that's coming later on. Um, but I absolutely forgot I put mountains in. There we go. Oh, but it's a surprise to me, as it is a surprise to you. 
So things can get a little bit darker as you come forward, okay? So just bear that in mind. So the further things are, the lighter they seem to be, and, it's, and they seem to be a little bit bluer as well in the distance. So always remember that. The distant things are, uh, are lighter and cooler. That's the best way to explain what I wanted to say there. So, okay, so I'm going to bring in a bit of green because we got green. Green comes in many shapes and forms. You know, we've got dark greens, mid greens, light greens and all this type of stuff. So I want to try and build some sort of a landscape up um, because I live in Wales. The, the, the grass seems to be very lush where I live. So um, when, I, when I paint grass, I tend to paint what I know. And that's what everybody tends to do. We all paint what we know. That's why a lot of us struggle with um, portraits and things like that, because we know what an eye looks like and a nose looks like and stuff like that. And But if you study a portrait, it's not what you think it is. <laughs> it really isn't. So, yeah, stay away from portraits if you're beginning. Um, practice with some blending techniques. Get your landscapes, get your distance Get your perspectives right and, um, you know, have a bit of fun with, with doing little paintings like um, that I'm showing you here and just, just enjoy yourself. Don't worry about what it looks like. It doesn't have to be, it's not going to win any awards. You're not going to sell these. If you want to sell them, you can, but they're little tiny little study paintings, fun relaxation paintings, and that's all we're looking to do. That's all we're looking to do. So I'm putting a bit of water in place, a um, couple of different blues, as you can see, a little bit of light blue, a little bit of medium blue. I got a little bit of Prussian blue that I'm mixing in there now, a little bit of green coming off the brush, but that's fine. That's fine because water isn't always blue, is it? It's, it's a murky, browny color. It can be a greeny color because it's got a lot of algae in it. So bear all that in mind when you're painting. Don't think that, oh, I got to paint water. The water is blue. You know, it's not. It's not blue. That's what we think it is. That's what our minds say, the water is blue, but it's it's not. It can have a reflection of the sky in the water. But blue water is not blue. It's like snow isn't white. Not perfectly white in any case. Yeah, certainly not certainly not perfectly white in any case. So Bear that in mind, because snow will adopt the colours of what's below. It can get dirty. And when we come to paint some snow, because we got we got the, the, the winter period coming up now. So we're gonna be we're gonna be looking at snow and and things like that. And we got Christmas cards to start planning for. So if you've got some Christmas cards and you want to do some paintings, you want to take some photographs of your paintings that you've painted, and then you can print them out. And you can buy the cards that's got the, the, the holes cut out of them. So you can stick your, your uh, picture of your painting to that. And um, if I remember, I'll pick up some. And we'll do a, we'll do a lesson on that to show you. Um, uh, if not, just give some little paintings as some presents. Uh, uh, that is a wonderful thing when you've actually done something yourself and you've given it as a gift. I think that's a wonderful way to give a gift. So you can see it, I'm putting a little bit of green into this water now with a bit of that, that cast colour, as I call it. Because it's got to reflect. It's going to reflect things around it so that you can see that water's now starting to get that watery look because it's not just blue. It's got a, mul a multitude of different colours and things flowing through it. There's, there's, there's reeds and all this stuff under the water. There's... There's algae, you know, you've got to think of all that type of stuff. So get in that little tiny um, short flat with a little bit of green on. And I'm just going to tap in some, some distant trees, having a bit of fun. And why not? So just having a bit of fun. Can you imagine that music playing in the background now? And um, yeah, I've got my incense burning, so I've got a wonderful aroma in the air. Wow, I've got my cup of tea next to me. What more can I ask for? A glass of wine, maybe. That would be nice. Yes, maybe maybe I should have a glass of wine. But if you don't drink, then a cup of tea or a cup of coffee is just as good. It really is. Okay, so those trees have already got that little bit of colour in them, haven't they? they got that little bit of 
a dark, a little bit of a, um, a mid-tone, a little bit of light. And again, I'm going to put some more trees in now. Just tapping that brush very, very lightly. Just getting some shapes. Just getting some shapes of what I think some trees will look like. On little bushes. All these little areas there where all these little rabbits and things can live. We've got squirrels. We've got birds singing in the trees. And I haven't got any idea of a specific tree shape in my mind. I'm just tapping the brush and seeing what's going to come out of the brush. That's what I say. Let's have a look what comes out of the brush. You might be surprised by what secrets that brush holds. And it, it's got a lot of secrets, trust me. Sometimes a squiggly mark is all you need to make a shape to, to tell a story. Yeah. Okay, so just tapping in a little bit of shadow colour here and there now, just lifting that up. Just lifting a little bit. You can see those distant mountains there. They, they faded in the mist. They're looking misty already as the paint is drying. It started to, it started to dull back. Acrylics dry very dull and matte. Remember that. So to get the luster out of an acrylic, we need to put a coat of varnish on that. But don't forget, the acrylics take up to three weeks to completely cure. Up to three weeks before all the water is evaporated completely out of that paint. So, yeah, I put a bit of white by there on my brush. By mistake, look, I thought to myself, oh, it doesn't matter, just brush it in. There we go. Let's have a bit of light there now. <laughs> so we might have a little bit of sunlight coming through behind one of them clouds. Just, just darting through the sky and just hits our grass and all of a sudden you've got this wonderful a light streak coming across there we are so i'm gonna play around now with a bit of dark color just to try and counteract that a little bit of white that i put in place there we go wow it's fantastic to be able to paint like this and um and i and i love having company in the studio so thank you very much for joining me and um Allowing me into your home, allowing me into your world. It means so much to me that so many people watch my videos and follow along and give me comments and feedback. And it makes me very, very happy and humble, in fact, because I'm not the best artist in the world. I just love to paint to relax. And that's, that's how it started with me, was the ability just to have a bit of fun because we we stopped playing when we were children didn't we all them years ago when we were kids we stopped playing and i think having having a laugh having some fun and if you can do this as with family as well i tell you what i was doing on a weekend i was actually doing something that i hadn't done for such a long time and i was baking a cake my little grandson daniel had a school project where he had to bake a cake so it was Bumpy Clive. Bumpy Clive would help. But Bumpy Clive hadn't cooked much for a long time. Although I do like cooking. I haven't been in the kitchen for a long, long time. But I, I did. I, I got there. I, st I baked a cake. <laughs> so just putting this bit of a tree trunk in. Look, you can see. I'm not worried too much what it looks like. Just, just getting in there. We got off somewhere for the birds to sit and sing, so I made a sponge cake. Ooh, it was lovely. We had, we had um, a buttercream filling with some raspberry jam, and on the top of that, then we put some more buttercream on top, and it we swirled it around with the spoon, and and we put this put a little bit of dust in on it, and oh, it would tell you what when it was finished, it was so nice, and my grandson was so so happy. Because he made that cake with my with my tuition, basically. I was just saying, well, do this, do that. And what a fantastic way to learn how to cook, isn't it? I remember cooking with my mother many, many, many years ago. I used to have so much fun in the kitchen. But then my art took over. And yeah, I still have so much fun. Even to this day, painting and playing and having fun. And just relaxing into the painting. I still got a couple of paintings that I did with my mother many, many years ago when I was little. I was telling my grandson, Daniel, 
I said, when I was eight, Daniel, I painted these paintings with my mother. And I was explaining how I did it. And his little face lit up. He said, I can't imagine you being eight years old, Bumpy. <laughs> I, was, I said, I can't imagine myself being eight years old, Daniel. <laughs> anyway, just have fun and enjoy it and spend time with your family. Maybe you've got grandchildren too. Maybe maybe you can just sit down and get some colouring pencils and some a pad of paper or something like that and just have a bit of fun. Yes, people take things too much too seriously these days. I don't take anything seriously anymore. There are some things you have to take serious, but when it comes to painting, why? Why why do we stress? Why do we wor worry about what other people think? We shouldn't have to worry about what other people think. At the end of the day, it's our little world, and we can do what we want to do. Just enjoy and have fun. That's what I say. Just relax. Relax into it. Just relax into it. It's really nice just to pick up a... This is an old brush that I got in my hand now. A very old brush. Yes, it's painted many a painting with me. And it's all splayed and raggedy. And sometimes... The old splayed, raggly old brushes are the best brushes for doing foliage. That's all they're good for. But I tell you what, fantastic little things. They got the, I've, I've had my money's worth out of this little brush. I really have. I really have. So I'm just trying to get some bushes and some, and some greenery, basically, around this water now. Because those mountains in the background. You've got those clouds of, of dark and back now. That's all nice and dry. And uh, I we we work in we worked a little bit on the mid ground there with the tree in it. Now I'm just trying to just put a little bit of definition underneath these these little bits of land that are sticking into the water. So I'm just gonna get a little bit of white, maybe a little bit of brown, put some dirt in there, just trying to get some light on the water, because there's gonna be a little bit of reflection in there. We just want it to look as if there's a little bit of water there. There we go. Just getting a, a few little f ripply, foamy marks, whatever you want to call it. There could be a little bit of movement in that water. There could be some rocks or something there. And there is. Look. Magically happened that there just happens to be a few rocks there. So the water is moving and it's just creating that little bit of foam around those rocks. And um, that's all we want. Just to show that yeah, there, there is movement there. That's where all little tiny frogs and tadpoles live. They, the frogs sit on the rocks sometimes and they have a little bask in the sun. And the little tadpoles then are just swimming around underwater. And mummy, mummy frog is just watching his uh, little tadpoles. And just, just put in a little bit of shadow now, just under that bank, just to give that life, basically. Just to give that life. A little bit of you, a little bit there. Maybe that water's just coming around. Again, a little bit of water. There we go. Getting some of those rocks in place there like that. Wow. Just put a little bit more water movement. There we go in that river, creek. What what do you want? What do you want to call it? Whatever. Yes. Just make it up as you go along. And these paintings are all made up. These all come out of my imagination. Maybe there's an odd tree or a, a, or something that I've seen that, I, that, I, that, I, that I'll pull out of my memory and I'm like, oh yeah, I'll put that in there, you know. But 99% um, of the time, this is all from memory. And uh, not memory, imagination. Imagination is a wonderful thing. Keeps the brain young really does so i'm just trying to play around with some greens now to get some of these um leaves and things bulrushes or something like that i don't know what do they call them reeds that's what they call them don't they reeds so yeah i'm in a bit of having a bit of difficulty there trying to get the color right so i'm coming going back and forth the palette and 
Yeah, maybe a little bit of lightness. Maybe I need it lighter, not darker. Well, just keep trying. Just keep trying. There's no such thing as failure. There's no such thing as failure in life. No. It's just that you haven't succeeded yet. Just remember that. We never fail in anything we do. We just not succeeded yet. And if we keep keep doing, keep doing, we'll always find a way to achieve our goals. There we are. Just just putting a few darker ones in now. Just those little reads. Just remember what I said. There's no such thing as failure. We just have not succeeded in doing what we wanted. And that's the thing with art. Don't build, don't beat yourself up if things are not going right. Just persevere with it. And you will learn by mistake. Yeah, if we make mistakes, it's okay. Just go with the flow. As old Bob Bross used to say, just happy little accidents. That's all they are. Happy little accidents. Just enjoy enough fun. So I got a little bit of a sharper brush now. I'm just going to put a few little watermarks in. There we go. Those rocks are lovely. Hid, hid behind those reeds. Couple of um, couple of watermarks. There we go. I need to do something to the right hand side of the canvas. That's as I'm looking at this now. As I'm painting it, I'm thinking. I I, I hope I'm going to do something for there because we need to we need to balance this painting off a little bit because it's all heavy on the one side. It really is. There we go. Let's just chuck this in. <laughs> a little bit of dark colour. A bit more reeds. I got the, I got this thing in my mind saying, yeah, we, we need to just chuck a little bit of dark in there just to, to bring that towards us and throw the background away. So all of a sudden, with a little bit of dark, we've created depth. Isn't that fantastic how that can happen when you're painting? You wouldn't think putting a little bit of dark colour in would give you the depth that you're looking for and then a little bit of light in front of that dark is going to create that illusion that it's just a mass of reedy 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 reedies reeds reeds loads of reeds <laughs> quick way to fill a painting up actually especially when you're doing something like this but that's that's what it is that's what happens in nature isn't it we'll see parts of the river bank like that where it's just a mass of brambles and reeds. There's little butterflies flying around. There's ladybirds. There's um, there's ants. Oh, what a fantastic wildlife. When you think about it, we're creating a world for our little creatures that, that exist in our world. That's what we're doing. Just creating a world of illusion. A world of illusion. So thank you very much again for joining me here today and listening to this old Welshman waffle. But I tell you what, I've enjoyed watching this painting today and I've enjoyed talking to you. Because I don't get the opportunity to to talk a lot, really, um, outside of the painting. Because when I'm actually doing a painting and I'm talking on camera, I'm concentrating so much on what I'm doing... And I talk a lot about the painting, but I don't have a conversation with my friends. And that's the most important thing, I think, is doing something like this. I'm able to talk to my friends. And you're all my friends. Don't forget that. You're all my friends. That's why I keep doing what I'm doing, is because I know a lot of you listen to me. And a lot of you just love to watch me paint. Some of you even will paint along with me. And I find that absolutely fantastic. So, yeah, I'm just going to put a few little things in the foreground now, just to balance this off, just to give it a little bit of depth. Maybe it's going to be a couple of reeds, um, not reeds, bulrushes. Just going to put a couple of leaves in. I think these are going to be bulrushes now, if I remember. That's right. So just put those leaves in that you'll find around with these bulrushes. Yeah, there's a lot of bulrushes around where I live. And they got fluffy white tops as well. Because when they go to sea, they go all fluffy. There we are. You can just about see them rocks, look. Just about. So let's put the black in place. There we go. Just putting the black in place now. And well, that's where the dragonflies land. So we've got dragonflies as well now as frogs. We've got 
butterflies, we've got squirrels. Oh, what a, what a world. What a world we're building. And there goes the little bits of fluff. The little bits of fluff that you'll see on these bulrushes or... I don't want, know what they call them around the rest of the world, but they call bulrushes with us. I'm just doing that. I might put some flowers in as well. Because where I live, where I live, there's a lot of flowers in the spring and the summer around the river banks. So let's just put a few little blobs of blue just to give it a little bit of life, a little bit of color, because there's a lot of green. Green and blue work really well together. We've got a little bit of yellow in place as well. There we go. A touch of red here and there. Fantastic. Put that red in. Pulls the eye into the painting. And that's the most important thing, is when you pull the eye into the painting. Well, there we go. So, yes, I've got. I've just had my, my, my stepdaughter's just turned up with her little dog. Molly's barking. They're outside playing. He's a little sausage dog, Milo. And he's a fantastic little thing, so, yep. Anyway, we're coming to the end of the painting. I want to thank you very much for joining me here today and listening to me talk, and um, I want to thank you very much for your company. And um, I look forward to seeing you in the studio again. So don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I will see you next time. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Hey, welcome. Thanks for stopping by. It's time to learn with our friend Clive. So grab your brush, have a great time. And don't forget to click subscribe.